What up, everybody? Welcome to Junior, aka Supa, JR.Supa. That's who I am. If you don't know, you can find me on TikTok, find me on Facebook, find me on the webpage, find me on the Instagram, whatever stuff this man got set up for me. I don't know. I got 500 million things. Today, we have a guest. Uh, it is going to be a little bit into the fitness thing, like what I talk about and how I am. And uh, a lot of people don't know, don't know me, even coming around and knowing what I'm talking about. It's mental over the physical so it starts here before you try and do some stuff like she can do things that i can't because my body ain't ain't work like that but we don't get into where you from what's your name what you do what kind of business you got what you trying to tell some people what you trying to show to the world oh that's, <laughs> i didn't know all that <laughs> be on the spot on the spot we just get right to it hmm where do i start name Monica Cruz. What do you do? What do I do? Right now, I am doing something I never thought I would. I'm a line cook. You're a line cook? I'm a line cook at a small restaurant in a small town in Shelburne, Massachusetts. I'm living with a friend on a mountain in Asheville, Massachusetts, kind of taking in the simplicity of sustainable living. Yeah, but I've been a little bit of everywhere. I, I've been so it's like where do you want to start? <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was, I was on the spot because I think mean, it's a lot. It's line, a line cook. cook. I was like, right. what? What? <laughs> exactly. I've been. I've been. Da- so uh, I'm a young mom. So the first half of my life, I was doing the mommy thing. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really venturing out, kind of, kind of pursuing what I'm capable of. Okay. So um, throughout the years, I have a passion for cooking. Always have been. I love food. Food is, nourishes my soul. And that's exactly how I put on like 25 pounds, like 10, 10 years ago. Yeah. I, I was a little oompa loompa. <laughs> but I was cute. I wore it well. <laughs> I did. I wore it really good. <laughs> I like to cook at home. I like to cook um, different nationalities. I just, I love the kitchen. Okay. So that's what I learned in the last 20 years as, as a mom. All right. Um, I was doing admin work all that time. I was doing work that brought in the financial stability. Do what you got to do. Right. That's what I was doing. Only, only two two jobs, I think. I think, yeah, two jobs the whole time I, I, I raised from, from birth to adulthood, two children, two jobs. So I did that. I did that pretty easy. That was that was the easy part. The hard part was when the nest got empty and I had all this time. <laughs> to look at myself. Okay. And that's kind of like, and I was doing that, you know, throughout the later years of raising them. I think th- um, at my late twenties, that's when kind of like when the, the weight gain, the weight gain. I was always active, having two kids, you have to be, but I could never maintain weight loss. I could never, I could always get there. I could always lose the weight, get back in shape for ready for summertime. But come fall, <laughs> it was like, same cycle continued. It's like you get to that fuck it. Right, right. So I knew that and, and life happens. And life happens. I have to recognize that. So there are some times where your rituals, your routines are not sustainable depending on what's happening. I got tired of being sick and tired. So I started realizing that no matter how much I hit the gym, personal trainers and everything, and I had some great ones. I had some great ones that probed at me. I think that will, that's what was important. It's kind of like having individuals around you that test your your limits and see what you're capable of. Yep. But again, it wasn't sustainable until I started doing the inner work. Like my yeah, life. yeah, yeah. That's when kind of like the world opened up a whole other level of pain and suffering. <laughs> 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 yep. Um, but also some really blissful moments that, you know, I, I have the wisdom to now take away with me. Can go through growth without pain so ooh, that, that was right. good you yeah, just like can't that. you just can't right yeah. right right so that's how and i that's how i raised my girls so they are both very young and independent and out there living in the world and i started venturing out to my passions and stuff that i like doing and comes to find out that i really do enjoy dancing that's one of my um so dancing cooking so if you notice, what I'm doing now is just incorporating all the things that I enjoy doing and just finding a way to make money off of it. Because, like, why not? Yep. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why not? So I've done the meal prep thing. I've done the at home business thing. And me deciding to apply for a line cook position was to see what my skill set level is working for a commercial or on a commercial kitchen. Okay. I've never done that. All right. Never mess with the fryer. Those like just you know the multitasking. It's a lot. I was gonna say you just you just went in there with winging it. Like let me right. just try something. They 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 took a risk and I'm pretty good at it. But if you think about it, if you th- if you've seen some of the stuff that I create at home, I'm one person and I'm doing it all and I'm cleaning while I'm cooking. So it's never a disaster. So I just have that skill set. It's just a natural born skill set. Put me in any place to test it, and I'm a, I'm a show off. <laughs> I, I sleep when I clean. <laughs> it's meditative. So, so technically, I'm not cleaning. No. <laughs> I, I'm sleeping, and then I vision myself cleaning, and then I wake up and go, "Oh it's shit!" Still not. But. Okay. I just I just leave it. But anyways, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but there but so it's just that important to you right now. Cause that that's how I am. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm able to do so many different things. I literally have to constantly battle and choose where I'm gonna put my focus. Okay. Cause I can juggle on a lot. I like it. It just fuels me. I need variety. Yeah. It stimulates me, it keeps me alive. So it put me into doing one thing on a daily basis, like the line cook will get old after a while. Yeah, I'll have to evolve into something else. It, it'll have to evolve into something else. So that's what I take every other avenue. So the fitness, the evolutions that I've been through in my fitness journey, starting yeah. from just going to the gym on the treadmill, just going for a walk, just walks, three walks, a hike. That was incredible. Then I got to a point. It was like, OK, you know, you, you just you just choose. You get uncomfortable enough. And I just have the tendency to like to grow. I like trying new things. So that went into I think I've done CrossFit. I've done yoga. I've done striking. I've done weight training, gymnastics. Um, she all over the place. What the heck? I, ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just right. saying. And then, was... and then the pole, the pole kind of came into my life kind of suddenly. I talked so is that what you're doing now? That I do a little bit of everything, but pole's my number one. Pole is the number pole, one. I don't need I don't need weights anymore. So for people who don't know what that is, pole fitness. A lot of people don't know what it is, so we break down a little bit. Pole fitness. See when you say when you say break it down, I know what culturally they how they talk about it here. Yeah. My history with pole, pole work, pole fitness comes from like back in the gypsy days. Like you know, it wasn't really stripper. It wasn't really raunchy the way it is now so pole, pole, so it's pole fitness it's, pole fitness i don't know if it's because because i see they a lot of women with sex work yeah but i see a lot of um older women now getting into it right and and i don't think they're like raunchy or whatever i just think they're they're getting it, into it to something new and it's like a dance right but it's, it's associated to sex work regardless okay so, so that so that's like, do you want to go go to there or like pull pull fit? Right, it is. It's a it's a different practice, just like any other mm-hmm. that people can use. Just like gymnastics, people learn the flexibility and they take that off and use it in however which way they can to make money. Okay, that's the same thing that any other individual is doing with the talent or the skill that they've learned. Because a lot of the people Class that pole dancing, it I mean, is my it body is. ain't fit for it all that. It is. But. It takes the mental discipline that it takes to do the things that those individuals do, as graceful as they do it, takes full mind body connection. It just does. Okay. It, when I first had the pole in my living room, and I was like, I'm strong. I've been doing. I've been doing. You know, personal. You know, I've been doing fitness stuff for years. I'm strong. Trying to pick myself up on that pole that first time, it was new muscles, <laughs> new muscles that I didn't think I like. That I didn't know I had. I'm like, wow, these are babies right now. I have to build even those up, even though I was strong in other other avenues of my fitness. Okay, it's different, different discipline, di- different work. How'd you get started? Um, or what made you want through, to get started? Through, honestly, I've always I'm one of those little individuals who always was fascinated by the idea of being, you know, that sexy dancer individual, but I'm, I have, I'm too chicken shit to do it for an audience. 
<laughs> so my fantasy was always, I, you know, that's what I would do for my partner. You know what I mean? That that was always like my thing. It was like, I'm, I'm going to one day I'm going to rent a, a spot that has a pole and I'm going to do a show for my significant other and I'm just going to show off. That was always my thing. And I shared that with uh, an individual that I was dating one time, um, my, my, my last my last relationship. And he surprised me with a, a pole for Valentine's Day. Not really, but not really for him. What it taught me, see, because what, what it taught me is that I always enjoy, I love dancing, but I never ended up with a partner who liked dancing. And I think for me, the pull was that. It's like, it's just going to give me a reliable dance partner. Okay. So that's that's what I realized came. So in other words, if you keep digging to your unconscious, like why you're drawn to certain things, that's what was it. The pull is my favorite and my most reliable dance partner. Never fails me. <laughs> <laughs> so do you teach that now? I do. I do. So I do. Is, is, that like another, is that like another another side hustle for it you? It is because it's just it, pretty much I am open and willing to teach anyone anything of anything that I know to the extent that I know it now. Okay. Cuz I'm not a you know, I'm not a pro, but I'm better than a, a bunch of other people that I can teach and bring along with me and as, you know, we all grow together. Do you think you can make levels. a business off of it? Yes. I do. Say, so, hey, you know, wrong with that, girl. I do. My my struggle is um, how how in what capacity can I commit to these? Like I said, it goes back to like I have to come down, you know, become an adult, grow up. <laughs> you have all these passions. You can only take yourself and stretch it out so thin, right? For it to be, you know, sustainable. So that's where I'm at. I'm in the mountains. I'm so so searching, and you know, I'm realizing that I really love and this this comes back to like one of my one of my goals one of my hopeful manifestations that it has been lingering with me for a few years is opening up some some type of um establishments that kind of brings everyone together well, what was it bridging the gap with love most art type thing okay i don't want to i don't just just as as variety as my energy goes i feel like that, that my the where my where my interest goes that's how i feel other people are when it comes to healing when it comes to this kind of work it doesn't take just one thing and my biggest struggle as a single parent trying to find things that helped me get better mm -hmm. was how expensive every one thing was yeah if i wanted to do yoga that was a hundred dollars a month if i wanted to in include like a spa thing that's like another god you know you know it's another fee a month and it's just not sustainable and I go back to like, how can I be efficient about all this? What can I create to kind of encompass, you know, a variety of things like that that can, that's just useful and it's practical. Right. I'm just, I'm one of those people who I need to be hands on to learn if I, if I can, if I can enjoy that skill long term before I incorporate it right. long term. So I definitely know I'll be feeding the world. <laughs> I definitely know that I'll be, you know, creating a, a platform to encourage individuals to, you know, tap into their inner child, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's through dance, whether it's through movement, you know, some, it's just, it's just circling back to like what creating a home that can encompass all the different things that I want to offer. So are you in the process of starting an LLC and getting this going? I have the LLC. I've had the LLC. I'm on my second year with this LLC. So you're on your second year with this LLC. <laughs> Yes. What, what else you got? You got the building? What was up? You got, no, you got that, and that's area? my thing. It's like the location. So right now I'm, I am being encouraged to kind of, because it's a small town, but it's a small town with potential. Okay. Um, and they have definitely opened up their community to me. And it's one of those kind of communities where it's like everyone knows each other type thing. Everybody depends on each other. I don't know about to be blunt. So, so was, why haven't you uh, pulled the trigger yet? What's up? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what, what, what's up? Small, um, so it's a small town. Right. There's really no pole dancing instructors. Nothing, nothing like what I'm trying to create. Okay. So, so there is an opportunity of starting a business and making some money. Right. And and showing something different that nobody's offering in that area. Right. And what what was what's stopping you? Um. It goes back to me. It goes back to like, I still have, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I am still, this is the part of the journey that I want to share is that this journey never ends. There's never a final destination. It's literally, you just constantly work on the expansion of your con your own container. Mm -hmm. What am I capable of? It, it takes putting me in. So right now, you know, I've gained a little bit more confidence. I work in a line kitchen. I, I see how uh, running a small business looked like, you know, I, I've done it 
at the previous place when I worked at a, at a yoga studio. And I think that that's what was the necessity for me is being able to see a small business being run and just admitting and just working through it to say, yeah, I can do this. Right. Because you know, how do you know until you've been put into the experience to say yes or no? I'm just trying to figure out when she's going to start this business so we can do When? Know. I don't have a date. I need a you location know? first. I so when you get the spot. location, I'm just asking if you could put a room that we put down the cardboard, do some break dancing. Oh, oh well, well, so <laughs> technically, hold on, because technically, so where I'm staying at now, her cabin is built by herself. She's been there for 40 years. And it is an atmosphere that we've been talking about starting the business. Kind of um, her backyard, the property that she's, the, the work that she's doing on it, it's majestical to me. It's it's just, yeah. it's just something that taps into, you know, when you talk about earthing, you talk about finding healing. Yeah. Something about that property does that for me. So we've talked about starting there, doing small intimate dinners, you know, with music, with, you know, just like a, a full experience. Okay. So we've talked about starting there. That that conversation actually just happened. <laughs> Literally. So when you ask me when, I don't know yet. We okay. haven't finalized the details. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I'm just, <laughs> but the conversations you know, are happening. You know, the, the conversations are happening. The, the universe is aligning me with the individuals that, that are meant to support me through this, you know, because... You know, it's not that I lack confidence. It's more of like how sustainable it is for one individual right. to do and, and and growing that team that's going to gonna really help drive that for us. I understand you a hundred and thousand percent because technically that's where we're at. Right. We're, we're on that stage. I'm on that stage of starting the things and I'm building my team around me. Right. So I I one thousand percent understand what you're saying but you know you had your llc for two years so i'm just trying to figure out you know I'm, I'm i'm about to get started on my llc so i don't even have it yet oh but so see but that but, I'm see, trying to but figure out, this you, you, you just, have this all down pat so it's, it's like an exchange it's like okay because again the llc was easy. I what this was right easy. this is like Listen. having to every time i do this do one of my recipe videos oh man that's why i haven't put the second one out yet <laughs> It's just so much work editing. Like, this is a lot of work. That's why he over there. Right. right? See, bless See, you. He sets me up and says, you know what you're talking about? And I say, no. And he <laughs> says, okay, you have to figure something out. And he says, ready, set, action. <laughs> that's it. There's no yeah. script with me. There ain't nothing. But that's a blessing that keeps you kind of like, all right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, just, just go. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Hey. <laughs> that's a... Uh, what we're working on. Right. <laughs> but again, it goes back to you gotta start somewhere. So yeah. this is, this he yells is at me, you know, hey, 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 we gotta. It's not yelling, it's constructive criticism. Exactly. I'm constructively falling down the stairs as I do this. <laughs> That's as instructive I, I it's get. It's always natural to resist, but you know, it's for your best. Anyways, but anyways, <laughs> whatever. He that's, that's his thing. I just do the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's pretty good that you, that you're going on. So, are you big into like yoga and all that meditation yeah. and stuff? Because you're just saying that's been so. That's the the meditation part has been something that I, the only thing that I've been consistently disciplined with on a daily basis, is that meditation. I've been sitting for my goal is thirty minutes. I think I've got up to fifteen, and that's pushing it. Some days like eleven, depending on how how late I'm I'm getting to work. But that's been something that I've been doing consistently for the last two months. And it, it definitely makes a difference when it comes to a person with a fast mind like mine. It's just like feel like there's ne never enough time. Yeah. That morning time to just shut everything off. And it, it takes work. It's literally another muscle that is one of my weakest. And I'm going to say this open. It is still one of my weakest. But that's why you put in the daily work. Every day you wake up. You're like, nope, I don't really want to do that. And when I say that's the only thing I've been disciplined in, it's because like it's so, it takes to be something so small as just get up and just sit with yourself for 10 minutes. Why can't you do 10 minutes? Try it. Try it. Because it's hard. <laughs> to quiet the thoughts, it's hard. I'm like, yep. It goes back to the things I have to do today. But that has been the best thing for me in setting my day. Do you play music? What do you do? Mm -mm. Just sit in your complete silence. And it's beautiful. Complete side. Is it in a dark room, lit room? You can what? choose because you can, you're going to close your eyes I'm anyways. I'm trying to figure out how, how we break you're this. Close your eyes. I make sure. So the one thing I have been doing, I haven't really been sitting on the floor. And, and because I'm not sitting on the floor, I'm usually sitting on a, on, on a chair or, or my bed. I make sure that my feet are planted on the ground. I know that's weird, but for some reason, something about having my feet planted and this, 
keeps my scent, my energy flowing back into me versus going out. Okay. Feet planted. Mm-hmm. What's the hand thing? And just connecting, just clo- closing your energetic circle so that when you sit there and you really sit with yourself and you kind of like, let just let things happen the way they're happening. If your mind is distracted, it's going to get distracted every 3.5 seconds. Okay. It okay. is. And that's why you'd be like, I'm not doing this right. No, you are. <laughs> Hopefully the goal is to shorten or to, to extend the, the, the amount of time before each thought. But that's the goal. That's it. That's all you're doing for as long as you can do it. Because the longer you do it, the more benefit you're going to get from it. So like, well, I don't say that that tops any prescription that you can get prescribed when it comes to mental health. I, I, but it's the hardest. And people, you know, again, we want to go deep. I go deep. People are used to being pleasure seekers. We don't like being uncomfortable. Who wants to be in discomfort? Facts. So that's what I mean. You can't, they can't be, they can't, can't create growth without, without pain, without discomfort. That's what I learned. That's what makes me, okay, I guess I get, so now I understand when people say, well, you seem to be so strong. Well, I didn't know that that's what I was doing, <laughs> <laughs> being strong. I was just, you know, I, I understand that there's always an end to my quote unquote pain or suffering. Okay. So I don't I don't have to cross my legs. No, you don't have to. All right. So my feels, feet. Feels, right, exactly. When it comes to that, cuz like I said, your the, the goal is to kind of keep your energy flowing versus right, just going people out. And they you want to create feet. you want to create your aura from the inside. You don't create it from the outside. But you can do it if you're sitting on the ground, you can crisscross applesauce. No, no, I was just making sure cuz I can't do that. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Listen, you nah, can. Listen, we don't Maybe have to come with with a moment, piece of wood or uh some people have to pry me apart, but nah. <laughs> I'll just try to figure out. So feet flat on the ground, close your your circle. Yeah. And eyes closed. Your index and thumb. Index and thumb. Eyes closed. Okay. And you just mostly follow your breath. You know, if you could just deep follow your breath and you know, you can set a timer. I'm one of those weird people that Timers give me anxiety. Like they knowing that it's on, I'm always checking if, the, if it's about to go off. <laughs> it's one of those weird things. Same thing with the alarm, and I and I always get up. I don't care how early I put the alarm clock. I always seem to wake up at least 15 minutes before it's gonna go off. <laughs> it's weird. I've proven that already. <laughs> so you can set a timer, or you can just go with what until it feels unbearable because it's gonna feel unbearable. <laughs> I've been there. I don't want to use an alarm clock anymore. So right. I just wake up. Right. Isn't that weird? Yeah. No matter how your time changes, it's like, you know, once you put that alarm clock, I already got this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my brain has this. Yeah. You don't want to hear that. My, da- my dad taught me how to wake up without an alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> Must be damn island people. Um, anyways. <laughs> you don't need no alarm clock. You got to get up at you 5 don't. o'clock. You should be able to get up before that. How? But some way, somehow, no, yeah. no. Seriously, with wisdom, you learn that the light, just the 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 change of the sky. Something, <laughs> so whatever it is, you wake up and you're like, damn. <laughs> it's like a half an hour or fifteen minutes before I got to actually get up. Right. What in the? Oh, th- those are my favorite. I'm like, oh, I got forty minutes. <sighs> Especially I, if I had the uh, adult beverage night, those mornings are tough because that I got twenty minutes turned into. Damn, that was an hour already? <laughs> I'm late. <laughs> you should drink water. That's why, I, even even with the drink nights, drink water. I drink water? I drink, I drink a lot of water. I talk I about people the age water. thing, because you're right behind me. We keep thinking like this big age is different. You're right behind me. I, I'm a lot behind you. I'm not right there, okay? I'm, is it even 12 full months? You need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm a lot younger. My body's probably not a lot younger, but I'm a lot younger. Right. And what what else you got going on? So let's see the cooking. Oh, so l- wanting to learn horticulture because my end goal, my my goal is like I said to create this whole type of community where it's interdependent, you know, and. I don't know about you, but rents are ridiculous for a lot of people in yeah. this country. So what better? And the accessibility to food has been such an issue. Yeah. So what better than to try to figure out a way to combine the two? And I say this because when I was living in New Haven, 
mm-hmm. in a three family house on the third floor where there was house back to back to back on in, in Fairhaven. There was not a lot of sun, not a lot of not a lot of land. And I still managed to grow enough vegetables to make a salad. OK, so if I can. And I taught my and I taught myself this. So if I can do this, can you imagine creating a type of development that in, just just was inclusive so that you're living like a almost like in a cul-de-sac type thing. And I'm not saying that's what it's going to look like, but something similar to that where you already have to befriend your neighbors for the most part. Mm-hmm. Right. And then there's also property enough that it could be the work can be shared because it is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. I could definitely say growing your own food is a lot of work, but I think it's meant to be. How do you appreciate? Because it goes back to that can't have growth without pain. Remember that? How can you appreciate what you have until you've had to work for it? I appreciate my Oreos. But oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. but how do you find that appreciation unless you put in work enough to say yeah I, I can I can imagine the sweat and tears that went into getting that food onto my kitchen table and that goes back to like working out some of the stuff that we all go through mentally so you got a green us. thumb I'm working on it <laughs> I'm working on it I'm working on because it's, again it goes back to like you know when when how much do I need to learn before I have enough to, sh- to teach, you know? Okay. Because like I said, I'm, I'm self-taught in most of the stuff that I, I, I've done. But it goes back to like, you know, my own mental stuff that, that limits me, that puts me in a place where are, you know, of feeling inadequate to, to share. But I'm like, but I can tell you from what I've done, I impress myself sometimes. That's I good. Do. That's awesome. I do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So, that's yeah, good. The, the horticulture, so so I my, my goal is to kind of get into the, some type of development, but that's long term. Come on, you're talking about it's like my five year plan. Five year plan, yeah. okay. And the LLC is mm-hmm. about six year plan. Right. Yeah, we, yeah. What you need to start going now. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just whatever. <laughs> but I think I think it's gonna start with me. You know, like my, my first LLC. I think that's gonna be more of like the services that I, I can provide because I, I definitely I'm, I'm recently enrolled in a it's a short sort certification to become an end of life doula. That's something that's been very new for me. So I don't know if you know what an end of life doula is, but same like they have birth doulas. Mm-hmm. These are individuals that assist families and individuals transitioning out through the process okay that's my first time ever hearing it really first time right so so right so i just have again it goes back to like i'd like to be involved and i say this you know with, with that specific end of like doula because i'm not doing that for the for the for the money it's not something yeah, that i was gonna I'm, say you ain't doing that for money right right but I just have, when it goes back to like, with the work that I've been doing, I've acknowledged that I just have the capacity for certain things that other, that just make certain experiences so much easier for others. Right. I do it effortlessly. I'm not even trying. So can you imagine if I had some education, some kind of certification, some kind of guidance to help nurture what it is that I, you know, what this gift is and how I can best serve? Because that's just how, what I'm supposed to do. That's my assignment here on earth during this lifetime is to serve. And I think that's why I have so many different interests because you know how delicious it's gonna be to be able to teach all these different things and not get bored by the same content over and over again. Come on. That's just, I'm like, yeah, girl, I ain't knocking you. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I don't have that much skills. I'll tell you that right now. I'm, no. Hmm, not you, them I, skills. I bet right? you you tapped in to, 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 to what, you, what, what interested you when you were a child, because some things we forget and we lose through our our experiences. Because honestly, some of the stuff that I'm getting, the dancing, all that, the food, all that's from my childhood. You just there's certain things that kind of stuck with you when you were that you kind of grow out of sometimes. But it takes life to bring you back to that. Thank you. Because <laughs> you can't tell me you were just a kid who just sat in his room and did nothing. Most of the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. But, you know, I mean, I was the fat kid that just sat in a room and just ate junk food and hung out. So, food and solitude, or when you say you hung out, you were always your friends, or did you enjoy solitude? Because you could always find gifts even in those things. Oh, I, you, I, you did. I enjoyed solitude a lot. Okay. And then, you know, do you get to do that now? Spend time in solitude. Oh yeah. Okay. Until Tim comes over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But no, no, yeah, I did. 
No, I did. It's my best time. Okay. Me, so myself, and I. What else is there? And my cookies. And cookies. Yeah. Do you make these cookies? Hell, hell no. Would you like to make your own cookies? No, that's too much work. <laughs> Y'all, y'all don't be judging me. Y'all know. No, it's not judge. Okay, fine. So you don't like you don't like you don't like work, or you don't like that kind of work. Listen, I. It says too much work. I I'm just work asking. my I'm butt off that I'm gonna go to the grocery store and pick me up some cookies. <laughs> All right. I know I'm not making no cookies. Right. <laughs> right. I'm fair. not the. You listen. outsource. Well, you don't enjoy. So, and because I, I do that too. Whatever I don't enjoy doing, I outsource it. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm That's why people have jobs. Listen, there's nothing against that. I'm gonna try to outsource as much as I can to my wife to bake cookies, <laughs> cake. <laughs> That's usually whatever I gotta outsource to her to make. That's fine. Right. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, I could bake. That's just no. Nah, I'm, I'm, no, if you don't, if you don't, it, you have to be interested in it. No. I, I know a lot of guys that enjoy cooking. It's meditative. Oh yeah, I love cooking. I cook, is a I whole cook. different dance. Yeah. I could cook whatever. There's there's years ago. Tim showed up at my house one time and said, yo, I'm hungry. I was like, I got you. And I whipped up some breakfast for him, you know? Whatever. I, I enjoy cooking. Well, like to cook anymore? No. Mm, no, I, I think I turned more and more. I got lazy. Fair, <laughs> fair. I'm just yeah, I like, like food too much. I'll tell you that, that, that goes back to like, I'm a, I'm a fat girl at heart always. Because I cook because I know how much I can eat. You know, the kind of food I like to eat. You know, my pockets ain't that deep right now. <laughs> so cooking, that's, and, but that's the other thing for me. It's like, I, I love food, you know, and, and I've learned that it, it does have a meditative aspect to cooking your food. And I'm constantly always trying to find ways to stay present and shut this busy mind out. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning to make my afflictions work for me. Okay. All right. That's good. <laughs> my mind ain't that busy. <laughs> that dude on a hammock. <laughs> See? With a pina colada, sometimes right. you gotta like shake the hammock so he can fall out of it. Like, let's do something. But that's amazing. Ain't knocking you. No, I'm listen. I am one hundred. I don't understand too because I'm I'm a hundred percent Jamaican, mm-hmm. and I do I do have multiple things going on at the same time, and I'm going as slow as a turtle sometimes. And people don't know how I get some things done. No, that done. makes sense. <laughs> That dude on nothing, the hammock like nothing surprises me. <laughs> Trust me, there are there are different types of individuals in the with everybody who can, yeah who can manifest from a freaking couch. I'm on, look, I'll be on no, chill no, mode. Right. I'll be on work so, chill mode. By the end of the day, like my supervisor be like, "Hey, I need you to done. Well, can you done? How, he goes, oh, how the so hell you get that done? That's fair. So don't worry that's about fair. it. Listen, man, I'm." I'm the That's real right. island boy, but all this stuff is done, done. Let's go. Let's move. Right. What's next? And you let's can do it on. at a nice, even, even keel pace. Just slow and steady always wins the race. That's it. That's. I don't know if they always win. But. Listen, boy, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> slow and steady. If you win it, just chilling. I find myself having to, yeah, to just put practices into place to slow me down because I definitely want. I'm one of those the things I can accomplish. Opening up something like by twelve o'clock tomorrow. And I'll put my body through that and it will go against my better judgment. Because, you know, it goes back to like, I do believe slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady does win the race. No. Mm. <laughs> Why? What, what did you take on that? <laughs> I don't believe in slow and steady. Oh, yeah. okay. What, but there's definitely fast a need for what? A, Right. Cause Fail fast, man. See, but Fail that's, fa- that's, okay. my I've heard about that. Like, but see, that, that makes me skip steps. Because I definitely have a... T- that, that is my tendency to work that way. But then I skip steps. And it's not as sustainable as I would like it to be. So that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, I got to go back. Because I have to go back sometimes when I mess up anyway. So yeah. just slow down. Slow do and steady I mean? doesn't mean always it's perfect. You do right. mess up. I'm not saying that. But you said slow and steady always wins the race. That's not mm. always the case. Though. But greed is... Fine, yeah. Find your, find your pace. You get, you get, you, both of you are smarter than me, so whatever. I'm just going, I'm going to agree with both of y'all. Okay. Whatever. But let's see, beyond that, that's it. That's so, a lot, though. No, you got a lot. The, the pole fly. Oh, so this is just the place, this is the first place where I went to. This is the place in New Haven. So aside from my, my self-teaching of the pole that I had in my home, um, this is the first place. Her name is Jessica. Brilliant, brilliant teacher. Love her. 
um, owned a small pole studio in New Haven. So that this is her. This is the first place I went to. So of course, I'm going to rock it. Good for you. So we can't wait till you open up your next one, though. So um, okay. what? how was it when you first started? You said it was difficult. So right. you have uh, videos of that? I would love to see those videos. Videos of, of you <laughs> when you first started. Oh, my Cause goodness. Because I've seen some of the older ones. Right, right, right. Yeah. Do I have any on this phone? So you got me on a, on a newer phone. Do I have stuff? I have no idea, people. <laughs> no. Uh, I've only seen videos on TikTok of people. So. But like when I say like pretty much the, the, the time where I was posting just mostly dancing on the pole, that's when I couldn't do nothing on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it, it literally started with every time I saw it just doing a, a top, just literally grabbing on for dear life. I don't care if I slid down the pole. Yeah. The goal was just to grab it and do a tuck. And I did that for weeks weeks just developing those small because it is deaf and each side of course because you got you got to train both sides because mm-hmm. now you're gonna get real dominant on one side and free on the other and that's how i started and i did that for six months and i was one of those people who depending on um who i was following that did post for it they did a pose that inspired me i was in trouble because i was trying it i was trying it by myself and i succeeded most times really did and I did some really challenging stuff that I should not have been alone doing shouldn't please don't do this alone at home <laughs> I never recommend it because Warning. you can but, but but because because we all think we can do it it's just that's what that's that's why we're alive that's why we're here because mm-hmm. we have survival instincts within us and we think we can achieve something that but there goes into wisdom you know I you know there are a lot of I, I've been through enough body I, injuries and just body awareness experiences that make me focus and that's what I'm saying I have a busy mind but when I want to focus on something I zone in and I it's amplified and that's why I'm able to do some of the stuff you know because I'm like no I got this but when I say I got this because I'm like I'm putting all my life force energy in that movement okay making sure that I don't die <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> right because it is like because it, it, it is it's really hard it's really hard and I, and I like and see that's the other thing I learned from doing this I'm a risk taker I like feeling a little scared I like overcoming some of those fears and I do that through the, the pull tricks the kind of invert stuff the kind of the, the shoulder mounts the, the I just Whatever enjoy she said, it shoulder mounts enjoy it. Yeah. It's because you know what I noticed as much as I loved being you know and not even just being fit I loved um, moving heavy th- things. I noticed that because I have an a, abundance of energy, you know, um, per, um, weightlifting was really good on my body and just and, and, and feeling wise, it just felt good. I just found it really freaking boring. <laughs> and that's why I always needed a personal trainer. I had to pay somebody to watch me for 60 minutes and tell me what to do because I refuse to do it on my own because it's boring. So that's where you could book me at as your personal trainer. To come out oh. and uh, to train you for six minutes and not watch you, but you know, help you out. Well, yeah, there's that. But, I, but, but what I learned is that I, I, I knew. So, yes, but remember, even personal trainers, your 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 goal is to help them get to a point where they can do it on their own. Yes. I just I'm just not one of those individuals. D- believe it or not, majority of people who want a personal trainer, they say they need that help until they're at this certain point, but right. they don't. Right. I just, I need accountability. It's like yes. An it's accountability that accountability partner. thing. Seriously. That's literally what it was for me. I, I could train somebody. I need somebody. you to tell me when I'm being a piece of, when I'm not, when I'm, I, yes, call me out. I yeah. need that because I'm not, I'm not, so yes. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to shy away from the importance of having a personal trainer. <laughs> no. Drew Cost was one of my, like, he, he hands down, he supported me through a lot of my, my, my mental physical breakdowns from yeah. thinking I couldn't do something when he knew you know he knew better so yeah but yeah. again it goes back to like that that lifting weights is what I was going on. yeah I know. I know I know I know she had to throw that in the training right. so I had, to, I had to defend my boys you know what I'm saying well, that some of you some practice of you. was no longer serving it wasn't fulfilling me okay and that's what pulled us for me gave a little jab because it's just as hard if not hard you don't know it's just as hard only thing is it's not if you can't build um, you can't add weight unless you start adding hmm start, start adding with body weight mechanisms so I can have to carry more weight when I'm on there maybe I have something 
Okay. <laughs> My business idea with that. We'll see. Mm-hmm. see. But as of right now, the pole by itself works. And, and the yoga. Because you can't do pole. Because it's like gymnastics without, without getting bendy and stretchy and flexible. That's for overall health. You only did it for six months? But pole dancing no no, no. that's oh. how that, so that that's what took me to even i'm sorry the six months was what got me it took me six months to even get up on the pole uh, like off the ground gotcha. consistently with no no regrets no cause, regrets right because it was painful and so six months yes. how long have you been doing four dancing? years four years it's been a little over four over over four years now wow Congratulations. About four years. Dang. About four years. What was the turning point? Like where you felt like you were good enough to just do it I on your own? I still don't think. What do you mean? That's what I'm saying. That's something you just learn. And I, don't, I still don't think I'm good enough. Because like, okay. I, I, I just. I, but I can definitely. And that's what I'm saying. It goes back to like. It's my own restriction that I'm putting on myself. It's mm-hmm. like that I can do things that. And I can teach people to do those things. You know that the common individual wouldn't. So it goes back to like what deems me worthy, I guess. You know, it gotcha. goes back to like the work that I'm doing. You know, this is the work. It's not that I, I feel um, inadequate. It's more now, especially, is maybe the space, finding the, the best space. Because I did, I, I, I was training in New Haven and I'm training now where I'm at, but I finally got my pole up, you know, in, in, in an apartment or in, in a home. Gotcha. And it's fine, you know, starting there because it, it is just me being one person trying to do this one area of life that I, I, I find passion about, but do I have the time to commit to it full time to be able to take on, you know, 10 people? I don't know. Yeah. Do, don't do know. you have, do you have a website or anything right now? So somebody could find you? Um, no, right now it's just my, my Facebook and my Instagram. Which is? Mm, my Facebook. Ooh, I got to open. Goddess. So both both of them are, um, it's called Goddess Within Me. It sounds like God is within me. And that's kind of like why I like the name so much. Because okay. God is within all of us. But it's Goddess Within Me um, on Facebook. And then it's Shop Goddess Within Me on Instagram. Okay. Here, do all that <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping to show more um cuz the whole goal is to teach women that we can teach people. Let's go back to people that I'm all about inclusivity, you know, inclusiveness. Um this is what adventure looks like to me. You know, and I think that's what we're missing a lot when we get into living life on a day-to-day basis. Is we forget the possible adventures that we can get into to see what we're capable of. And I wouldn't have encountered any of this that I'm doing right now until I put myself in like, well, I'm curious. Let me try. Mm. And I've done so many different awesome things along the way. I've learned so much about myself and I'm still learning. And that's the best part Mm because I got a whole other life and I have two grown kids walking this earth. And it's just it feels surreal. And that's when people limit themselves when they say they can't do a crisscross applesauce. (laughs) I'm going to say right now, maybe, but you can. Are you calling me out again? No. What the? <laughs> f- I ain't doing old crisscross. I ain't good. No, listen, listen. I told you, my body old. My knees going to say no. My back going to say, what the hell are you doing? No. Nah. Your back might love it. My back going to crack and say, we done. You better call 911, homie, because we ain't getting like out of it. this move. <laughs> <laughs> just, or you might like it. You won't know until you try it. I'm a big, I'm a big believer of. Um, you don't know what you, what you like until you experience enough. You better get a ratchet strap trying to get my legs to <laughs> cross or something because my leg is like, nah, we good. <laughs> you already beat yourself up and up, homie. Up, your body just nah. Anyways, whatever. Go. Wait, but <laughs> aren't, so are, aren't you a personal trainer yourself? Absolutely. So how do you push your clients through these limits that you're? Because it ain't my body; yourself? it's their body. I am not that. Oh, per- I'm not that. Oh, how you doing? You doing good? Tri- oh, I'm not that person. I don't give a damn. I'm pushing you to your limit. I don't. You know what? Right. But, I am that trainer. Don't don't you want to be able to show that? I've already. I do. I show my trainers what I've already been through. Right. Right. All right. Because I was, believe it or not, about three hundred, about three ten, and I dropped down to compete for a competition. I dropped down probably like one nine. Okay. That's a, that's, so I've been there. I beat myself okay, up. Okay, right. 
So. And you say you've been there. You're not there now? No, I'm not there now. I let myself go a little bit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because in, in my... Now we look like we're turning it on me. Right. Now I see this, right? <laughs> so here, here's my thing. So there's a lot of personal trainers that I don't like. So I feel, in my opinion, most personal trainers want to look the part, but can't be about the part. Okay. Not a lot, right. but I'm just saying some that I know, they want to look it. I know a lot of trainers who back in their heyday was phenomenal. And then you look at them now, they look like a regular Joe Schmo, but they'll give you a workout that you just go, what the hell? Right, right, there's that. But that's, I think that's so superficial. But I, I guess for me, it would be, cause I think I go back to like, understanding that life happens. And I love being able to teach individuals that even when life happens, let yourself fall apart or fall off or whatever you want to call it. Let yourself go, whatever Absolutely. you want to call it. Because you always have the God within you to push yourself out of, out of it when you're good and ready, if you should desire to. I might not look the part anymore, like Mr. You know, right, 190 right. You pounds. Have, you, have, you have the same ideal, the way of. I did have a four pack. It was like it was like a four and a quarter pack, but I did have a little choo 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 going. <laughs> but I know I could get myself there again. Right. But I I rather use my knowledge to help others. Right. Instead of because putting that effort in myself to get to where I got to get to. Right. I can't help you. Well, see, and that's, ooh, hold on. Don't say can't, son, because that's what, that's what I'm hoping to teach is that never give more than what you have. Never serve from, your, in other words, only serve from your overflow. But I, that my, my biggest lesson is that, because that's honestly what my struggle has been. I've just been selfless to a point of giving more of me than I can sustain. Right. That's just, that's who I am. That's why my my work has been creating boundaries that tell myself okay monica i know you know i know you can technically you can keep doing that you can push yourself you can add this task you can add this you know obligation you can do it but is it gonna if or what what is it going to do for you to you long term mm -hmm. is it going to hinder you know your your health or is it going to progress it and i that that's that's the work that's that balance that's that finding that fluid movement i i still struggle with that taking on five days a week when I wanted to only work three. <laughs> Come on, I said three days, you know, but I was like, you know what? They need me for now. It, it, it goes back to like, okay, and I'm taking, and I'm okay, because this is still my overflow. Right. I'm still working off my overflow. But if it gets to a point where I'm, start, I'm, I'm starting to feel myself taken away from self, that's when I have to start evaluating what I, what I have on my plate and just, okay, you have to push this, to, you know, here. And oh, oh, no, I hear you 100%. I, right now where I'm at, I maintain myself. I right. still go to the gym. Right. What I do, and I, and I still have time to train my clients or whatever, but to get myself into the physique, physique, Mr. Right. 190 four pack. I just know, I just know myself. Right. I commit. But if that's not your goal, because for me, my goal isn't to be my fittest. Right. Like, my goal is to do what I enjoy, to feel good doing it. Absolutely. And what comes of it, great. And, that, and then that's what I try to tell people is, is when they come to me and the first thing I ask them is, what are you doing this for? And if somebody ever mentions that they're doing this for their kid, doing this for their spouse or anything like that, I always no. Right. This this ain't. I, but it depends on how they say it. Because technically, I live my life because I am modeling for an, I, I am modeling as an example for two. Yes, two you kids. are. So I'm not doing it for them, but I'm modeling the example of what they are capable of. What they're capable of. You guys of. came through me, so. But what they're modeling <laughs> it for. <laughs> It's like if you came and said, no, I'm doing this for my daughter. Right. I'm going to be like, no. No, no, no you're right, right, right. I, I see where you're going for it, but right. Because then then at the end, for average Joe Schmo, like you said, you they don't have that mental part yet. So they would always, majority of time, not all the time, relax, <laughs> will fail. And then they say, oh, yeah, I did it. Uh. And then for me, because the asshole that I am, I said, you didn't fail. Your daughter failed you, right? Because um, you're doing you. this for your daughter, you're doing this for your husband, you're doing this for your wife, right, whoever. Right, right. And I mean, they failed you, right? Right, right. No, no, because I. Uh, but but in the beginning, you said this, and then here you are. Right. 
No, that is definitely an important step to, to, to encouraging them to do it for yourself. That's what I'm saying. That, that's what the mental part is, is that you have to want it for yourself. You have to want it. You have to. Like it, nobody can want it for you. Even my kids could not want it for me. There we go. Mm -mm. No, you're right. She's trying to put my butts. No, I'm right. well. See now, that's another part of my <laughs> delicious human design. I have, I have a natural ability to provoke. You know, that's just because I like, I, I, I go deep. I talk. There I can go. talk about win against me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wanting to talk about all the uncomfortable little cracks in the wall. <laughs> I just covered every putty. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to say before we before we go no you sure I have a question oh one last question you got one last question hold on so if any anyone from the audience wants to get started in pole dancing what do you recommend they do like should they Ooh. buy a pole what type of pole they should yes. buy yes so right oh my goodness so you went, when you go I don't know too much about the, the types because I, I know with me I went with the the, the like the Olympic you know, or, or like the tr traditional size, which is 45. But depending on the, the, there's 40, there's, there's as far as like the, the milliliters of the pole. So there's different sizes. So I, I don't, I wouldn't recommend, like, I, I wouldn't know how to re recommend that, but just pull. I have an X pole okay. just because it's durable. It's like one of my favorite brands, but there are plenty other brands out there and I'm not sponsored by anybody. So I don't, you know, so I can't, I, I would say, I know that we all want to be brave and think that we can get on a spinning pole immediately. But one thing that benefited me is that my first pole was a static pole, meaning it did not spin. And I promise you, you won't need it. You won't need the spinning because the, the, as you get conditioned to do it, you want it to be harder so that you know. Because once you put the spinning effect into action, you can literally fly off the pole. Like it's that, like it's just that much. <laughs> Videotape that, people. <laughs> Seriously, trust me, because it's almost happened to me. I'm like, oh, I, you know, you just don't realize that you don't need that much, you know, force to make that pole move. And when you're trying to do an invert and then you're throwing yourself on it to do it, you're going to fly off because it's going to, depending on how you move, the, the pole get, just gets faster. So static, starting with a static pole. And I would say uh, if you're not already inclined to flexibility, start a flexibility routine. You can find that on YouTube, to be honest. You can do it from home. Go to yoga studio. Um, there are virtual options. There's so, but I would say some type of movement um, practice. And if it includes dance, even better. Like I said, my, my whole goal is to kind of incorporate multiple, multiple practices because they're all beneficial. So movement via dance and flexibility and strength training through gymnastics. Love it. That, the pole's going to be easy for you. Nice. I, I got nothing. <laughs> I, I just I just need somebody to videotape when they get the spinny pole and post but I it. Do, oh, that's so that's one thing I do want to include because I, I don't know because there for me even there was a stigma with pole pole work pole fitness whatever you want to call it pole dancing okay and I know you can make money off of it I get it I get why but what it does for the person because it's men and women included the type of sensuality that you find working. You know, and, and even without the pole, let's let's take the, the pole for me just makes me a badass. So not only can I dance on it and get into my sensuality, get into my feminine, but I can also tap into my hyper masculine energy that I naturally have. That's the doer in me. So that's what I like about that. OK, but the empowerment that I got, just like opening up myself, it goes back to like playing with both your masculine and feminine and energy, your sensuality between the two that that's nothing you can put a price on like i get it people sexualize it it is a sexual life force energy is sexual i don't know if anybody knows you know whoever made this cup used their life force energy to make it their sex energy you know what i mean if you want to talk that basic mm -hmm. so yeah everything's sex work in my opinion okay what she said there you go right but I don't have no judgments on what women choose to use, women or men, how they choose to use that practice. Because it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful art. Bodies are beautiful. Agreed. Right. <laughs> it's like, what, 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 are you, what are you losing there? You know, so that was it. But thank you for having me. This was great. 
Word for shizzle. Well, that's still a, that's still a word. Word for shizzle. For shizzle. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. Oh, I use that once in the blue. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. All right. Other than that, he gonna put up her stuff. Y'all already know Jr. Dot Super. Find me. Get at me. We out. Thank you. Thank you.